Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, December 13th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Cotton Bowl game against Missouri is in 16 days. The game against Michigan in 353 days. We will find out how many of the Buckeyes that we talked to in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Tuesday afternoon are going to be here for the game against Michigan in 353 days. But everyone we talk to, Kevin Noon, is going to be there for the Cotton Bowl. That is pretty surprising. We talked to 12 players, six of whom had you know real serious NFL draft decisions to make. No decisions on the NFL draft other than Cody Simon, who's coming back. But everyone we talked to is playing in the Cotton Bowl. I just spent the last two days trying to project with Tony Gerdeman on the show who was going to maybe opt out, who wasn't going to opt out. And so far, they're still batting a 1,000. I'm going to assume that Tony has to sleep on the cot of shame for his predictions. but From, uh, from your lips to uh, Tony's ears, I guess. There you go. There you go. But... Uh, no, we're certainly hearing the right things. Uh, unfinished business, want to end the season on, on a high note. Of course, that means having to beat Missouri, but uh, we know the note that everybody had left the season on was up in Ann Arbor, and that one didn't turn out the right way. So, you know, I don't expect it to be a clean sweep. I think that there may be a name or two that still decide to opt out for the, for the bowl game, but it's certainly... You know, I, I think that Vegas and the odds makers are going to be listening to sit there and see how many Buckeyes are coming back because this very easily could have been completely turned the page to 2024, multiple double-figure opt-outs, and it does that does not appear to be the case. No, I, I checked the line after I first heard the first person I heard uh, announced. Well, Mecca Abuka was announced, and uh, well, let's see. I'm gonna I'm just gonna run down the list. Jack Sawyer. Jordan Hancock, Donovan Jackson, Denzel, uh, Denzel Burke, Emeka Ibuka, Tyleek Williams, Cody Simon. All those guys are playing in the Cotton Bowl. Cody Simon already said he's coming back for 2024. But it was Emeka and Denzel, who were two guys who I think were legitimate questions. And they both said that they were coming back. And I went, okay, I'm going to hop on one of the online sites and see what the line is now. And then we can look again tomorrow and see if the line has moved. Ohio State was plus two and a half. Uh, at the time that those announcements were made, we'll see whether that line moves at all. There are a lot of names on that li- that are not on that list, and those are not names that we've heard are opting out. They're not names we've heard are not opting out. You know, I I was kind of going through in my head. Okay, we still are waiting to hear from Trevian Henderson. We're still waiting to hear from Marvin Harrison. We're still waiting to hear from Mike Hall, J.T. Tuimoloau, um, Cade Stover, Tommy Eichenberg, Steel Chambers. Um, Josh Proctor, we don't know Lathan Ransom status from both a health and return right. status. You know, they, there's there's still a lot of guys that we gotta we gotta hear an update on at some point. But you know, it was it was much more unanimous, and I think the the consistency of the messaging too was interesting to me because there was a lot of unfinished business, as you said. That you know. Jordan Hancock talked about the fact that, you know, he came in with this great class in 2021 and they haven't beat Michigan. They haven't gotten the Big Ten Championship game. They haven't won the Big Ten Championship game. They haven't won the National Championship. I mean, that's that's something that sounds like that is sort of resonating with that class and with these guys as they are sort of weighing what they want to do for the future. Right. And the fact that it sounds like everybody is on the same page with that makes me think that there are going to be a lot more people that are going to follow in kind. And, and, and again, and I think it was Jack Sawyer that had mentioned this. I, I would not fault anybody for a decision of opting out. Everybody's got to come to their own mm-hmm. their own determination here. They got to do what's best for them, their family, their career. But this unfinished business, I think it was a case of it wasn't even necessarily a seed that needed to be planted by anybody. These guys are all very prideful. They all are among the best at at their level at what they do. And it, do we call the Michigan game a stinker? Uh, it was stinky at a couple of points, and I think that a lot of these guys would like to sit there and have a little bit more attached to their legacy at Ohio State. And again, using the, uh, the Jack Sawyer uh, interview, when asked about this being, quote unquote, you know, a meaningless exhibition game, uh, he said in no uncertain terms that that kind of stance is BS. Mm-hmm. This game means a lot. Yeah, he spoke a foreign language. I, I know that because he said, pardon my French, but... Yes, that was uh, that was uh, you know that that really kind of changes the narrative around this game a little bit. Maybe around you know I don't know if it, how much it changes around the Ohio State fan base, but that certainly is not necessarily the narrative. You you know you're there is a difference between 
saying the right thing, and then backing it up by, you know, showing up and playing the game. Those are different things, because it's very, well, it's a serious thing, and we got to, you know, anytime, and it's an honor, and yada, yada, yada. I mean, he seemed, Jack Sawyer seemed legitimately excited to go play in uh, Jerry World. I mean, that was, yeah. you know, that is, that is a cool opportunity uh, for these guys. And, you know, Jack Sawyer is like, someone who grew up watching Ohio State football. He, we talked about Braxton Miller being his favorite Ohio State quarterback when he was a kid. So, you know, one more, one more chance, or one more chance plus another season worth of chances to play for Ohio State, that obviously would be somewhat appealing. Uh, Kyle McCord did not grow up an Ohio State fan, and Kyle McCord will not be at the Cotton Ball game. He is uh, uh, currently in Lincoln, Nebraska, if uh, internet reports are to be believed, uh, with uh, former future Ohio State quarterback Dylan Rayola as well. Uh, he is, uh, those two guys both uh, in the, you know, McCord in the transfer portal, Rayola uh, potentially flipping from Georgia. But with Kyle McCord not here, Devin Brown is here. So Devin Brown you know, the presumptive starter for the Cotton Bowl. I don't think they've officially announced anything yet, but what uh, what did Devin Brown have to say? Because we got, got a chance to uh, talk to him. Yeah, Devin Brown said all the right things. He certainly at one point did say, it's crazy to think my first start is going to be in the Cotton Bowl against a great SEC opponent in Missouri. Well, nothing's been named yet. And uh, I mean, after the interview, there was a little bit of a clarification there. He has not been named the starter, but mm. You have a quarterback who is approaching it as if it is going to be his job, and that's not in a in a stance of saying, "I'm the next man up. I've earned it. It just is going to be mine." But I don't think it's going to be a case of where in his mind that anybody is going to be able to take the position away from him. Though he was very complimentary of how Lincoln Keenholz has been pushing him. Lincoln is still learning as a first year player who did not have the benefit of a winter term and a spring practice. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of excitement Uh, in talking to Devin Brown. He did not really get a ton of heads up about the move either that Devin was leaving. A lot of players said that they kind of learned on on social media. Um, But, you know, uh, sad to see Kyle move on, but excited to potentially get his journey moving forward and mm-hmm. one other thing that I think that will probably be asked by fans right now in the chat or in in the, in the comments mm-hmm. when asked about a potential of a transfer quarterback coming in he's like look I'm just here I'm, I'm here to compete against the best that's why I picked Ohio State that had to deal with the burning of the ships mm-hmm. I'm not concerned about any of mm-hmm. that yeah so and that and just so there's clarity on that you know, even if Ohio State did and in, and in, in, uh, add a transfer quarterback, I mean, if they can add a transfer quarterback five minutes from now, that guy's not eligible for the Cotton Bowl. That's a 2024 edition. So it is uh, Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, Tristan Jebbia, and then walk-ons who are the options. And Xavier Johnson, he does yeah, everything else. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he does do just about everything else. So yeah, but you know, Devin Brown was the clear-cut number two quarterback this year. So. You know, and and repped when he was healthy, repped ahead of Lincoln Keenholz all year long. So you would certainly assume he's the starter for the Cotton Bowl. And then for 2024, it's probably an open competition between Devin Brown, uh, Lincoln Keenholz, and Air Nolan, Air Nolan, and mystery quarterback. You know, behind door number two. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what Monty Hall comes up with there. But in the meantime, uh, Josh Pryor was asked about the transfer portal. And he was, he was another one, I believe, who said he found out from social media about Kyle McCord transferring. And he, just, he said in general, he's not, you know, like this was not a statement specific to Kyle McCord, but he just said this was, he's not a big fan of the transfer portal in general uh, about in college football. Because he said, you know, this is his, what, fourth year, third year? I mean, he, he has been at Ohio State for quite a while. And, he, you know, he said it would have been very easy to walk out the door. But he, he pointed to former Ohio State offensive lineman Josh Myers, who said to him, do not leave. Do not leave. Stay there. Because Josh Myers took a while to get to the field, too. And Josh Myers was a five-star prospect at one point and I think entered as a four-star prospect. And uh, Tony Gerderman uh, shared with Josh Fryer the story of Josh Myers uh, coming to Ohio State as a tackle and then going up against Nick Bosa in, I think it was Nick Bosa, it was either Nick or Joey Bosa in practice, uh, and then he wasn't a tackle anymore. Uh, and, you know, so Josh Myers had a little bit of a long and winding uh, path to the playing field at Ohio State and then has now had a very successful NFL career. But Myers told, told Josh Fryer, you got people around you who are going to, you know, you are going to be set up for success for life. Do not leave. Stay there. Stick it out. And, you know, that that's something that resonated quite a bit uh, with Josh Fryer. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that was real notable. Um, just, just a lot of guys pointing to that Michigan game, pointing to, 
you know, a lot of the unfinished business that was, you can always kind of tell when the message inside, you know, what the message inside the building is because you hear it come out of five different people's right. mouths at different times. Very clearly, that's the conversation behind the scenes, and that's going to be something that I don't know if that's the sole driving factor in the 2024 decisions. That's probably a little oversimplistic, but it certainly seems like that's going to be a factor in the 2024 decisions for a lot of these guys. Right, and it'll, so it'll be interesting to see. I've been, you know, we've heard names along the way of, oh, don't have this guy pushed out the door quite yet. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's starting, I think, to ring true a little bit more with what we what we picked up on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking at whatever the number is of players entering the transfer portal from Ohio State. I think it's up to 15 now with Wiltrell Hartson, who wasn't on scholarship. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, well, are they going to be able to field a roster? If a majority of the guys that we spoke to on Tuesday mm -hmm. are back, I mean, this team suddenly goes from being really young to probably being one of the more experienced teams mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the Big Ten, year one of the Big Ten being in its new 18-team mm -hmm. configuration and the 12-team playoff. And you do also have a little bit of, you know, there's, there's the, in addition to the want to beat Michigan, want to go to the Big Ten championship game, win the Big Ten championship game, compete for the national championship, in, in addition to all that stuff, the math on some of these decisions has changed a little bit with NIL, where, you know, I, I'm still, Marvin Harrison has not announced the decision. I'm still expecting Marvin Harrison to turn pro. I think that's probably the safest of the bets on, on anyone right now. Like, I, I saw the report about he's been offered 20 to $25 million in NIL. Mm, yeah, I, yeah I, me too. I, I think there's an order of magnitude issue there with that reporting. Uh, but, you know, he he's more than likely probably going to end up deciding the NFL whenever that decision is made. Just about anyone else, unless you're a top half of the first round guy, and maybe maybe an all of the first round guy, you can make an argument for come back, put another year good film together. The NIL, you know, you go from you know not being able to earn money to now you can you, you see Michigan very successfully brought back a bunch of their guys with the I think it was like the one more year campaign, and you, you brought back Blake Corum and a bunch of guys for one more year with NIL payments. It feels like the math on that is sort of changing a little bit, and I wonder how much that impacts all these guys coming back. Because if you opt out, you've sort of made your decision. If you haven't made your decision, then you can sort of get more information from the NFL, figure out where exactly you stand, figure out what your options are. It's interesting. I would have thought for sure that this would be a year where you saw more opt-outs but you've seen, I mean, so far we've seen none. I'm, again, I'm expecting to see at least one or two probably, right. but so far none. And I wonder how much that, you know, the, the delay in the 2024 decision plays into the guys coming back for the Cotton Bowl. I, and I think that there's something, too. It's like, well, if you look to the left and you look to your right, and both these guys are coming back, mm -hmm. I'm going to come back, too. Um, as for your pro discussion, I mean, the only person that's really come out and said they're going pro is Mayan Williams, but he was already mm -hmm. banged up at that point. Yeah. And, 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 and truthfully, at some points, you're like, well, I'm probably a... I'm probably a late day two guy to begin with, and if I come back for another year, I'm probably still a late day two guy, so I don't know if there's really a ton of upside to it. Yeah, it'd be great to be able to spend time with my guys, but you know, if you have a degree in hand and some of these other things, you've, you've, you've accomplished a lot of your goals at that point. You're going to have an opportunity to make an NFL squad, to get drafted and do those things, but... Uh, yeah, I think that all of this stuff sounds really good in terms for what some of these 24 decisions could be. But, you know, you just don't know. And I don't. And, and, and the thing is, is that I think it's a lot easier to kind of get caught up in the group moment when it's, I'm going to come back and play for the bowl game. But when you're talking about something that's as huge of a decision as whether or not you're going to leave eligibility on the table or go to the league and things of that nature... I think everybody's going to have, I think that one is everybody's going to have to come to their own decision. Yeah, and we'll see when that decision comes. At this point, I would certainly assume 
if guys are playing in the bowl game, those decisions are probably going to come at some point in January. That's usually a few days after the the bowl game. That you right. Sort I, think I think it's. I think it's. I think the deadline for declaration and the portal closes on the second. I think the declaration deadline is like the fourteenth. Yeah, it's usually the second end of the second week, early third week of January for that. So, we'll keep an eye on all that stuff. But boy, we've got a much more interesting Cotton Bowl to cover than we than we might have guessed. 24 hours ago or 48 hours ago or so. So we will, uh, Kevin and I will be down there along with Tony uh, covering that game. We'll be down there uh, starting on Christmas night. You'll probably start seeing, I think the first media event is on the 26th. So we'll be, uh, we'll be live from Dallas on the morning of the 26th with uh, interviews and we'll have uh, practice coverage and uh, interviews with Ohio State players and coaches, Missouri players and coaches, Ohio State practice, Missouri practice, all that fun stuff. And, and probably the, a barbecue Triple H. And then I'm going to guess we may find ourselves in a lodge of some pecan nature one way or the other, uh, as one does when we are down in uh, in the Metroplex. Uh, but we will be, uh, we'll be down there for all that fun stuff. Uh, but before we go down there for that fun stuff, we have uh, early signing day coming up on the 20th next uh, Wednesday. Transfer portal uh, still open, still uh, potentially some business to be done there, both in the incoming and outgoing varieties. Uh, so we'll see whether the Buckeye, how active the Buckeyes are in the portal. And uh, also, uh, so we got recruiting, we got portal, we got the game, we got X's and O stuff with uh, Ross and Devin and Mickey and Justin all at BuckeyeHuddle.com, making you a smarter football fan. I'll say a rather fun and active board, which uh, just I'm going to guess has been pretty active this afternoon as well. Well, we've been at interviews, so we'll be uh, we are there at BuckeyeHuddle.com. If you uh, enjoy what we do here, that is a great way to support us. You can become a member there, get access to all of their great stuff and more. And then uh, if you just enjoy watching us on YouTube, that's okay too. You can hit the thumbs up button, you can hit the uh, subscribe button, you can hit the bell to get notified when we go live because there are going to be going to be plenty of live content coming for you in the next few weeks. Going to guess we'll have some shows about uh, NFL draft decisions, some shows about uh, you know bowl decisions uh, bowl opt-outs or opt-ins uh, potentially some recruiting flips and much more that's all at buckeyehuddle.com and youtube.com slash buckeyehuddle that will do it for today thank you guys all for joining us have a great day we'll talk to you tomorrow <laughs>